Hello, my name is Sergei Artemyev and I am an artist. Today I will share with you the process of work. The portrait of a girl with a mirror is based on a fairy tale by the famous Russian poet Alexander Pushkin. The mirror that I am painting now is very important in this artwork. It speaks to its owner, it is magical. And so the magic mirror must be made very carefully, very thinly. This is a very important element in this portrait. It is necessary to display patterns on the back of the mirror in several layers, because such work cannot be done at one time. First, we mark out the main drawing, outline the contours, fill in the gaps and do this three or four times, gradually drawing the entire pattern. On the pattern, you can use a very thin brush, each time adding lighter tones to increase the shine, outlining with darker paint the places that turn out to be shadows. As a result, the mirror will become more and more volume. This work is the most interesting, because it is already the end, the final touches, when a rather chaotic drawing turns into a generally normal and full-fledged pattern. All pimples are approximately the same, they are made of gilded bronze and, accordingly, each has a dark part, a middle part and a light part with a glare. On the bottom of the mirror, we begin to display dots, strokes. That is, the more details, the more natural this mirror will seem to us. All these highlights must be done at the very last moment. And once again I emphasize that this must be done in three or four layers, this cannot be obtained in one layer. This work is painstaking. I worked with this mirror for several days, now I am showing you only the very last minutes of working with this object. The main element has been completed, now you can move on to the bottom of the mirror. The leg is also bronze, we also give contours with Van Dyke paint. For the colors of gilded bronze I use paints, white, medium cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and Van Dyke. And now all of them, as you can see, are used on this part. We start with darker elements, using Van Dyke, burnt sienna, outline the outlines and draw out dark places. Add shadow elements. I draw your attention to the fact that our light falls from right to left, respectively, on the left we will have convex elements that are lighter, on the right they will be in shadow. And so in each element. You still need to try to make it more natural, but you should not do it completely photographically, so that it is painting, and not copying a photograph, so that it looks like a painting in general. This is how we draw contour after contour each time, layer after layer, and we will end up with a three-dimensional image of gilded bronze. Precious stones, blue and red, are transparent, respectively, there will be transparent reflections, the reflection from the light is light, bright points, and accordingly, darker tones can be used there in the shadows. These are the same tones that I used in the gilded bronze that I used to render the gold ring. That is, the same white, ochre, medium cadmium yellow, Van Dyke. And so, gradually increasing the color and tone of the ring, we achieve its volume and get a fairly natural image of the golden ring. Copper buttons, here we simply add kaput mortuum and red ochre to the golden tones. Dark tones are Van Dyke. We just carefully remove these curls and then we put hair on top, since they are above our buttons. That is, the basic principle of a three-dimensional image is that what is closer to us is done later. Now let's move on to the face. There are already four to five layers of paint on the face and I apply the last layer with a semi-dry brush. This is a kind of glazing, I select the tone of the paint, rub it over the palette, as if drying the brush, and then with this brush I rub it directly over the picture, over the face. In this case, I use brushes with a short pile. Better use synthetic, three or four millimeters wide. It is very interesting to draw eyelashes. Here the eyelashes are not dyed, natural, as light as the hair. Using a dry brush allows you to even out the surface of the face, making it more natural. Several days have already been spent on the headdress, and the last strokes are of the greatest interest. We now draw every pearl, every gem, every sequin. All these decorations that women have fastened to their headdress since ancient times. It is better to finish pearls with a dry brush so that there are no sharp highlights, and pay attention to reflections from fabrics and neighboring jewelry. At the very end, we apply brightening tones on blue peas, on gilded elements along the edge of the headdress. We work with a small brush. 
I draw your attention to the fact that each of our peas is round, respectively, it has a dark shadow side, an average tone, respectively, blue, red or pearl, and there are glare from the lighting itself, which are light in color. Here we also work with a small brush, it gives a very thin stroke and allows you to enter small elements, very high quality. If you pay attention, I work with my hand on the canvas. I think it's just not possible to do this otherwise. Just pay attention to this and it's okay if you gently lean your hand on the canvas. I am ready to answer any questions in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you.